Hopefully you're doing well. First, I want to say thank you for all the, all, um, hi guys. Um, hopefully you're doing well today. First, I want to say thank you for all the birthday wishes. Thank you so much. I read all of them. I, I love all of y'all, um, guys who've supported me both. Uh, personally and minister wise I'm thankful for all the likes and all the comments and all of everything I'm so thankful it does my heart glad that uh, what God feeds me with he feeds you with I'm so happy about that and thank you for all the wonderful birthday wishes I'm 36 today time goes by fast um, oh, um, it's, it's been a ride these past years, but God's been faithful. God's been faithful. Um, what I have to say today is, uh, my, my sermon, if you will, is called Guarding the Gift. It came from a comment a pastor made in his sermon yesterday about people coming up um, to his nine-year-old. preacher yesterday saying just a little comment he made about people coming up to his nine-year-old daughter saying are you gonna be a preacher like your father or something like that and I thought I thought oh my gosh how much how how silly you have to be to come up to a nine-year-old little girl and um and say something like that. It's so much pressure to put on a kid. Um, I know sometimes adults mean well, but leave children as children. Let them grow into what they are. And if, if God reveals to you a gifting of a child, never ever exploit, take advantage, or use that gifting to your own means like you know sometimes adults do that and they don't even know they're doing it like a child may be gifted in in preaching or in science or math and they get praised for that gift and they should but sometimes the gifting can get so much especially on a child it can override them as a person so we want to celebrate children but we don't want to put pressure on them to to um, operate in that particular gift and the thing is that they may not um, be in that thing they may be a stage that they're going through Children are learning as we are, but especially children. Children are learning, so let them grow, let them change, let them discover God and discover who He is and discover who they are for themselves. Don't put pressure on your children to be something um, because they show an aptitude for it or whatever. Let them discover uh, what they 
want to do want to be or who they want to um, let, let, let them discover what they want to be or who they are in God's own time because if you force something on them before it's time you can actually do more harm than good you can abort their destinies that's just an aside. So as when he mentioned about his daughter, I began to think of um, how important it is, not only for children, but for adults too, to guard the gift, to guard what God has um, put in you and to, to just... Um, let God develop it because some sometimes I found when you let things out too quickly what God has been doing in your life people tend to s either stifle it or bring it out too quickly and you're not ready for it and, and God has sometimes when God shows you a particular purpose or a a particular way you're going he wants you to keep it quiet for a while he wants it to grow as a seed and he wants you to nurture it in private that's why he would say in his word in Habakkuk chapter 2 write the vision make it plain Um, I think, I think sometimes in this time of social media, people let things go too quickly. Um, people just, when God reveals something to you, you just want to share it with everyone. Um, and sometimes that might not be the best because God is nurturing it per God is nurturing purpose in you. God is revealing himself um, day by day to you. And, and what God's put in you is so precious. It's like a precious gem that he wants you to guard and keep safe. And it's like um, one of those old photography uh, photos um, when, when they used to take a photo, um, in the olden days, now when di di digital changed a bit, but when they used to take a photo, uh, um, they used to put, put it in what they called a dark room to develop it. Sometimes, uh, what God will do with purpose is put it in a dark room. He will reveal it stage by stage and step by step. And then as he's revealing it, he's developing it. And as you're going through trouble, struggling to get it off the ground, he's developing it. And so that dark room is needed to perfect it. So if you expose your gifting too quickly you can destroy it so keep your gifting to a select trusted group of people until he is ready to expose it um when i was watching the story of michael todd he was telling his story. He told his story a couple times, but uh, but my favorite video video of him telling the the story is when he um, told um, Rich Wilk Wilkerson about a year and a half ago or two years ago. He said he was. Um, he said he was working as a producer 
at a church and his parents uh, started their own church at 50 something. So he started working with his parents at night and still producing music uh, for this for this other church during the day. And it came to a point where his parents said, um, we don't have uh, the vision for this generation. We believe that you do. And um, to make a long story short, uh, two churches uh, combined uh, to make one church. And um, the pastor, uh, it took, uh, um, first he started as a youth uh, minister. He started preaching to the youth. And then it grew and grew and grew from there to the point where the youth service was was uh, overtaking the church. To make a long story short, um, he ended up being the pastor of Transformation Church. And when he started in 20... 14, I believe there were there was only 10 people watching like they would post the sermons but only 10 people would watch but um, but but a stranger started to share it started to share uh, the message um, but one stranger shared one little clip on Facebook and his ministry blew up from there. See, um, so all that he went through was his development. At the time, I would assume he thought, this is just not working. Um, but it, it took all those views of all those um all those times when nobody was viewing his post or whatever he just kept on in faith believing although i'm sure there were times of discouragement and look where he is now he's one of the best preachers of this generation he's one of the best voices of this generation see sometimes God hides you, not because he wants uh, to get rid of you or not he, people to see you. Sometimes he hides you because what you have is too valuable for people to mess with. And he knows if he reveals what you have too quickly, people will take advantage of it and you won't be ready. Sometimes God, most times, he, in that dark place, he's developing you, you. He's developing tools. He's developing strategies. So hang tight. Even if you want to start a business or if he's giving you a vision, don't worry about being seen by people so much. Worry, not worry, concentrate on perfecting the vision. Concentrate on hearing from God, perfecting the vision, and the vision will probably change. But write what you have for now, whatever you have, even if it sounds stupid. Write whatever you have for now. And even if it change, changes, at least it's, it's a start. Look at me. When I first started YouTube uh, years ago, it came out of a place um, where I, I was hurt. And I, and I was like, okay, Lord, um, what do you want me to do? There's so much inside of me and nowhere to put it. 
so, so I started a YouTube channel, and and my serm the sermons that I did about seven years ago, when they first started, are now getting a lot of views and. Uh, people that I don't even know are being blessed by words that I put or videos that I put together about seven or eight years ago. Um, so what you do now, the seeds that you plant now, may not be for now. It may be for later. Um... Because you don't, just because you don't see it now, it doesn't mean that God is not working for later. It doesn't mean that God is not working in your life. Um, there, there is um, a a bridge that Sh Sinish sings. Um, Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. See, even when you don't see the seeds you plant, he is working. He is doing his perfect work in you. Disguised as catastrophe. Sometimes God sends storms to blow, to blow what he doesn't want in your life away so he can use the raw the raw materials which he does want to his perfect will stop fighting the storms pray for tools pray for pray for wisdom in the storm and pray for tools to not only get you out of the storm but to use after the storm because in the storm you will get tools to use after or, or you will find out what you what you have you will find out the tools that you have if I didn't go through what I went through uh, financially and spiritually, I wouldn't know that I was the strong woman that I am. And um, and then sometimes uh, we want too much of the approval of people that we don't guard our gift. We don't hold our gift is sacred. We pimp it out. What I mean by print it out, like we show it, we broadcast it for money, and we use it, use it unwisely. He's saying, be careful of what I put in you. Guard your gift. It is precious. It is like a pre precious gem.
not only is your gift precious, but you as a person is precious. You as a person is precious. Sometimes when you're really gifted or really good at something, you get known for your gift. You, you get known Sorry, um, my phone is really busy today because of my birthday. But as I was saying, sometimes when you're really known for something, you get, you let that something overtake you. And I'm saying, you are important past your gift. God wants me to say that. You are important past your gift. If you couldn't sing, couldn't preach, couldn't do anything, you are important just the way you are, just the way he's created you. You are important. You don't need, you don't need to do that to be important. That's the, whatever gift you have is the tools he's given you to worship him. Not, not so that you can prove your importance. Your gifts are a gift. Hello? Oh my God, Rich. I so, I'm so sorry. I forgot to sing you happy birthday. I'm going to sing it now. No, I can't do it now because I'm, I'm live. I'll call you later. Okay, bye, bye, bye. Bye. Mom, I have to, yeah, sorry, um, yeah, the gift, your gift, your important past your gift, what, without anything, without the gift of sing, without the gift of preach, without the gift of management, without the gift of anything, you are important past your gift. If you didn't have the gift, you would still be important. And, and the enemy doesn't want me to say this because somebody will get free right now. You are important just the way you are. You are important without preaching. You are important without um, teaching. You are important without anything. You are important just for you. And remember to take care of the person that houses the gift. A lot of celebrities and a lot of people of uh, famous preachers or whatever forget to take care of themselves past their gift. Forget to read the word just because they they need it not just for a sermon i've gotten myself into this situation too where um you you constantly look in the bible for a sermon and forget that you're a person who needs feeding who needs loving who needs you know encouragement who needs discipline who needs you're a person past your gift. You're not just the manager of that company. You're not just the CEO of the company. You're a person. And um, look after the person, not just the gift. Feed the person, not just the gift. Go to the Bible just because you you need it. You don't, you don't have to go to the Bible preachers out there every time for a sermon. You need to go to the Bible because you need the Word of God for your own life. And you know, sometimes 
in that you will find the gift to feed other people but first you have to um, know that the person the house that houses the gift needs taken care of as well and, and a lot of people um, a lot of moms run themselves to the ground taking care of this person taking care of that person making sure kids get to all their activities making sure kids get to school schooling at home um, now and they spend all their time doing this and being there for their husband or whatever and then at the end of the day they're just dry for themselves and moms the best gift you can give for your kids is to have you rest to have you get into the word of god for you to have you do something fun that you like to do without them sometimes you need to recharge yourself business people pastors everyone needs to recharge themselves it's wonderful and godly to give out to people but you cannot give to people what you don't have for yourself and that's the best way to guard the gift is to take care of 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 the place where the gift is housed you have to take care of yourself so, so take some time uh, to have fun take some time to spend some non-parenting time with your kids take time to laugh with your husband take time to go for walks and do something you love and not just for other people because when you give and give for other people at the end of the day sometimes they don't give back to you and you and you're frustrated and you're wondering why am i giving and you don't give to yourself give to yourself and know that for all your labor it's not in vain yes lord all your labor all the things you're giving up to family giving up to friends giving up to your kids giving up to your spouse it's not in vain the lord sees you right where you are listening to this today on your ipad on your computer whatever device you're listening to this today god sees you he loves you he knows what you're going through he knows where you you're you're hurting and his answer is on the way and his answer may be in a in an unexpected place yes lord his answer may be in an unexpected place look for the answer you've been praying for today in an unexpected place listen learn and look in unexpected places you can learn from your kids you can learn from your husband you can learn from your wife you don't have to go to school to learn sometimes learning comes when life is happening so some sometimes sometimes learning also comes in the little so look for the answer in an unexpected place I love you and I am praying for you and I'm sorry for all the phone ringing um, I'm getting a lot of birthday calls today um, so I will see you later bye thanks again for all the birthday wishes I love you so much thank you for your love and your support and your encouragement
Remember, the gift is not only precious, but you are precious. Outside of your gift, you are precious. You are not only enough, but you are way beyond enough. God's given you the exact tools that you need to do what he's called you to do. And most times your calling doesn't start big, it starts in the little. So celebrate the little place you are now because that is where you're called to be. And he will take you to the next level. If you just learn to celebrate where you are now, it's okay. It's okay to want, it's okay to hope, but for something bigger but don't live there celebrate the place where you are now and when God is ready if it be his will he will take you to a broader sphere of influence but sometimes he doesn't want you to be in a broader sphere of influence Sometimes he needs you right where you are. He needs you speaking into the life of your family. He needs you speaking into the life of, of, your, of those children on Zoom if you're a teacher. He needs you all of that. He needs you to do all of that. So thank you so much. Bye.